Um, the new moon this month is super powerful and I'm really excited for it because it's in Pisces, which is the last um, zodiac in the whole like 12 zodiacs. So it's it's got a lot of energy behind it. And I'm just really excited for this new moon. I hope you guys are too. So let's see, let me move this around. Here we go. Okay. So what is a new moon? For those of you that are new and haven't come to any of these before, it is the start of a lunar calendar. It is the first lunar phase of the moon cycle. So it's when there's no moon in the sky. Well, it's there, but we can't see it because it's actually between the earth and the sun. So lots of stars, not a lot of light, um, and pretty, pretty cool time of the month. So it's the beginning of a new personal cycle. Typically we use new moons to set intentions, manifest our goals, start new projects, things like that. The new moon's effect on us. So if you think about the moon, um, it has a very strong gravitational pull on the elements, especially water. Um, think about like the tides. So it, our bodies are 70% water. So the new moon and the full moon and all the phases in between <laughs> have an effect on our bodies. Um, the new moon in particular can affect like your mood, your sleep. Um, researchers have found that your blood pressure and your heart rate can be lower during new moons. It can help accelerate hair growth. They can make weight loss easier. You can increase your sex drive. And it's also an ideal time for conceiving a child because if you think of the new moon as um, the like new beginning of something, you know, a, a birth. Um, and also historically females, um, we are very in sync with the lunar cycles, um, especially with like our men menstrual cycle. So the full moon was typically when we would have menstruation. So if you think about the new moon, which is about two weeks later, that's pretty close to ovulation. So that's kind of where that comes from as well. So getting into the details about this new moon, which is on March 13th. So we're a little bit early um, since it's the 10th, but typically we feel the energy three days before and three days after. So right now is when you should be um, feeling like that very beginning energy of this new moon. Uh, Pisces correlates with the fish and ocean energy. Um, it encourages us to take leaps of faith. We're going to be focusing on accepting the imperfections within ourselves and others as this new kind of perfection. So the way that I interpret this is kind of thinking like we're all perfectly imperfect. And Pisces correlates with the dream realm. So focusing on our dreams and what they are revealing to us um, would be really good during this time. It's also um, about feelings of moving forwards. So this is kind of like, like I said, that last sign in the Zodiac. So it's really, how can we start again? How can we start even fresher in this whole new year cycle, not just, you know, this month, but also this whole year, um, lots of moving forwards. And we are growing by becoming sensitive to our vulnerabilities. So that's kind of, um, was going on astrologically speaking in the next not just this moon cycle but in the next years to come really growing from our vulnerabilities we saw that in 2020 this huge like breakdown of all the things that we knew were normal um we kind of tore apart that and there's a lot of upheaval and now we're starting to heal So this new moon in Pisces, we've got three planets actually in Pisces, or four planets in Pisces, I believe. Yeah, four planets in Pisces. The new moon, um, the sun, Venus, and Neptune. So Pisces, like I said before, is the last sign in the zodiac, and this new moon is a good time to release and let go in order to prepare for all of the new beginnings. We also have the spring equinox around the corner. So it's a good time to set intentions for like this next chapter. You know, spring is like that rebirth after the death of winter. Um, so it's a really lovely time that we're coming up on. We have this imagination and visualization is gonna be coming in really handy. Um, if you think about all of these themes, they're really interconnected with just like the season of spring and all these new beginnings and new growth. Um, visualizing what, you know, your most abundant time is going to be, which is typically in summer. 
And it's a key, a key vibration for this new moon is to surrender. So surrendering to what must be, how can we let go of what's no longer serving us um, and really surrendering to what the universe has to offer us. Music, dance, creativity, spirituality, emotional release, fantasy, dreams, and sleep are all highlighted. Um, those are all qualities of Pisces, which I think is why I love it so much because those are all like the fun things. <laughs> um, so that's really highlighted under this new moon. We are also transitioning from an age of being like everything was really ordered before with like the A to B to C, you know, let's do everything in this line, how we should do it. Um, and now we're transitioning into feeling what's best in our hearts. This has to do also with the um, like age of Aquarius that we're kind of moving into that I spoke about in the last uh, new moon cycle, but really not following that status quo anymore, not doing one, two, three in order, because that's what society tells us to, but doing what we feel is best for us, what we can tap into in our tuition, in our heart space, um, and going from that place, which is pretty cool. So some actions to take under this lovely Pisces new moon are to keep a dream journal. I actually have mine right here. Um, I used it last night because I ended up waking up with vivid dreams, which I'm not surprised because it's the start of the new moon. So pay attention to your dreams the next couple of days, next like week or so. Um, keep a dream journal beside your bed because if you wake up in the middle of the night and you can remember a dream, write it down right, at the, like, right then and there. Um, I wrote mine down at like three something this morning when I woke up just because you're not going to remember it, you know, a couple hours later when you wake up. We have so many dreams a night. Um, if you can remember something, take advantage of that, write it down. Uh, because if you read back over them, hopefully by the end of this new moon, there might be something there that, you know, is an answer to a question that you were asking. Another alternative is to actually ask a question before you go to bed, you know, ask the universe, what should I be doing on my job path or my career path? Like, give me some answers and try to write down your dreams. You might have an answer within them. So that's pretty cool to look at. Um, the next thing is create. Pisces is all about that like creative energy, that like self-expression. So whether it's poetry, creative writing, exploring in nature, making or listening to music, painting, drawing, building, do something that's creative for you. Lose your sense of time and space creating something that you love. Um, and the last action to take during this new moon is to dance. Uh, Pisces is all about like that dancing self-expression energy, which I love. So putting on your favorite tunes, dancing it out. Um, Work on activating your chakras and connecting to your highest self through dance. So there's a lot of research on dance activation for chakras and, you know, different dance moves, um, simulate different parts of your body, different, um, activate different chakras. So just maybe doing some research into that if you're interested in it and expressing whatever emotions you are feeling through your movement. There is no right or wrong way to move your body. You can do it in front of your friends, you can do it in the comfort of your own home, in your closet, whatever it is that you want to do, just try to move your body, have some fun with it. Oh, hold on, I need to move my screen again. Okay, so today we're going to participate in a new moon ritual like we usually do. I've added a little bit of, um, a little bit more astrology, I guess we can say. Um, to this week's talk. So I have some horoscopes written out um, based on this new moon, but also kind of the theme for the month of March. Um, we'll do a little bit of a reflection. We'll draw our tarot cards. Then we will do some journal. If anyone feels called to share, we can share. And we'll do a little bit of meditation. So gather anything that you need, you know, pen, paper, journal, um, if you're working with crystals, you can bring them out at this time. Where am I? Um, I have two crystals here. This one is moonstone. Uh, moonstone's like very dreamy water energy. Um, sailors used to keep moonstone on them when they were sailing across the seas because they thought it helped to keep them safe, um, just like the light of the moon would. So at night. Um, and then this one, I actually cannot remember the name of it. Um, I got it in a little shop in Florida and I just can't remember what it is for the life of me, but it's so shiny and black. If you can see in the um, camera, 
it's so shiny and dreamy. I just felt that it fit really well with the Pisces energy. So um, I'm working with these two for this moon cycle. Uh, make sure you have a good space. Um, and before we begin, I just want everyone to take a couple of like nice clearing breaths. So we'll take a nice deep breath in through our nose. Hold it for a second or two at the top and then just sigh out your mouth. All right, we'll do that one more time. All right. I've already saged in my room, but if anyone wants to sage, they are welcome to do that as well. Um, and if you feel the need to just shake out any energy that's a little bit stagnant so that we're nice and clear as we're going into this ritual and these intentions. Okay. So into the astrology part, I absolutely love horoscopes. So this makes me really happy. Um, but we're just going to go through each of the signs and you'll be able to hear what's in store, um, for you, this new moon cycle, this coming month or so. Um, but I want you to check your sun sign and your rising sign. So if you're not sure how to do that, you can go on to any like astrology calculator. Um, a good one is called astrocharts.com and put in your birth date, your birth time, and where you were born, and that'll give you the most accurate. If you don't know the time, then you can um, just put in like noon, and your rising sign might be off, but your sun sign will still be okay. Um, and your sun sign is basically like the, has to do with the month that you were born, um, or like the actual number date, um, so your month and the day. And that's like, you hear people saying like, oh, I'm a Gemini or I'm a Taurus. So that's kind of what that is. Whereas your rising sign is, um, it's also known as your ascendant sign. And this has to do specifically with the time of the day that you were born. And this has, um, for those of you that don't know, your rising sign is kind of how you project yourself onto the world. Whereas your sun sign is more um, like your personality. So it's good to check both of these when we're doing horoscopes. Um, because they're both going to have some accuracies for you during this cycle. So the first one is Aries, and this new moon is in your 12th house. Um, if you don't know what all of these things mean, if you're not super into astrology, that's okay. Um, you don't have to make yourself crazy over it. Astrology is very in-depth. <laughs> so anyways, back to Aries. It's in your 12th house, so you want to pay attention to your connection with the divine. Um, it is a new beginning in cutting yourself some slack. So spending more time doing you and, you know, not what I said before, not following that status quo, not going A to B to C if you don't want to. Um, you can also focus on spending money on a vacation or taking some days off. Uh, you may get an enlightened message about your career path. This could come in the form of like dreams. Um, sometimes we just get like those little mini epiphanies in the middle of the day. So pay attention to those. For Taurus, this moon is in your 11th house. It is all about making future plans with friends, traveling, getting back together with people you haven't seen in a while. We, you know, have been so isolated with COVID. So this is a huge, um, huge thing for the Tauruses. And you may be um, hearing from friends or like foreign affairs, legal issues um, will be solved in your favor. So it's kind of like this interesting energy about like future plans, traveling, meeting with other people. Um, if you have any type of like business transaction happening or legal issue happening, it's going to get solved in a positive way for you. Uh, Long-term goals and dreams are also happening in your favor. Excuse me. So you might, you know, have had some long-term goals or things that you've been working on for a while. Those are going to start to um, follow through in a good way. And we will know where you are healed or you're no, you know, sorry, you'll know where you are headed. Um, so those plans, you're kind of going to get a very clear insight about where you're going, what your purpose is, um, what you should be doing. For those Geminis out there, uh, this new moon is in your 10th house, so you can expect new beginnings around a career path. This is like prosperity, maybe a promotion, maybe a new job um, coming up. 
you could be stepping into a position of leadership, uh, given more, more power, more influence, um, or you could be launching a new public project, which is pretty cool. Creativity is important. So if you're having a professional crisis, know that it's going to be coming to an end and you're going to have a little bit better idea of where you're going with good prosperity involved. Moving on to our cancers, this moon is in your ninth house. Um, it's a mental new moon for you. So you might be feeling inspired to study something new, maybe um, in the spiritual or philosophical realms. You might be inspired by a partner to study or start studying with a new partner perhaps. Um, it's a good time to travel with a partner long distance. And it's also a good time to settle any legal matters or start a new business or relationship. So. Lots of new beginnings here. Um, I forgot to mention this before. While I'm going over these, you can feel free to write in your journal if you want to take notes on your signs. Uh, Leo, this is in your eighth house, this moon. So it's going to bring about some psychological transformation. It's a new beginning on finances as well, but fi not your own finances, finances that you have with someone else. So if you have like a joint bank account with someone, if you have um, like a business partner, things like that. There will be positive news related to work endeavors, such as securing funds for a new business venture. Um, you might overcome a work-related crisis or a health-related matter. matter. Um, and it's a good time for you to set up a passive source of income. So if you've been thinking about, you know, creating a class or maybe writing a book or something like that, it would be a good time for you to do this now um, if you're a Leo. For Virgo, this is this moon is in your seventh house. Um, if you are in a partnership, this you're going to be getting some good news um, from your romantic partner. It could be in the form of like taking the next step. So whether that's um, if you're already married, maybe it's having a baby, or maybe it's buying a house with someone, or maybe it's um, the guy that you've been seeing casually or the girl that you've been seeing casually. Um, now you're taking it to the next step of you're actually going to be a couple, an item, <laughs> however you want to call it. Um, moving in together, having a child, things like that. So expect more romantic time. It's also a really good time to sign a deal with a business partner. There's a lot of um, business and money things going on with this new moon for pretty much all of the signs. I think it has a lot to do with uh, Jupiter and Neptune and their placements right now, um, but lots of good fortune. For Libras, this is in your sixth house, so expect some good news related to work, like a new job or a new work project. Um, you may be spending more time at home with family members as well, so you might see some new beginnings around your habits and your daily routine. Um, you may have the urge to change up your physical appearance as well and to begin feeling happier within yourself. Uh, there also may be good like health news as well. Scorpio, this moon is in your fifth house. You may connect with someone romantically. If you're in a partnership, expect these um, like agreements with your partner to, ex to be especially fun. Um, you're gonna get like a little bit of a romantic boost. And it's another, again, it's a good time to start any creative projects with words or communication or connecting with others. So that could be writing a book, you know, starting a podcast, things like that. For Sagittarius, this moon is in your fourth house, so you may start working from home or moving due to an increase in salary. There's going to be something going on with your home structure. Um, you might also be begin uh, beautifying your home in some way. So maybe you've always wanted to paint or put new carpets in or make a garden, whatever it is. Um, you're going to beautify your home in some way. It's a good time to strengthen family ties and reconnect with family, especially with COVID. We haven't, you know, been so connected. So especially reconnecting with your family. For Capricorn, um, this new moon is in your third house. So you may be making a new purchase, such as a car, something big. Um, it's also a good time to travel short distance and constructive relationships and work will be established. Um, if you are in sales, Capricorns right now, you're going to have a really good um, selling spree, uh, for lack of a better, better word. I didn't know how to word that, but like a selling spree, like you're going to have make a lot, ton of good sales coming up. Um, if you wanted to start a new course or a class to pursue a more formal education, um, do that, but make sure that you're tapping into your talents and your passions. So if you wanted to start a new class on, I don't know, knitting hats, um, 
do that rather than starting a new class on something that, you know, doesn't really interest you, but you think could be more profitable, go with your talents and your passions right now. Capricorns. For Aquarius, this moon is in your second house and you might be having some type of like epiphany or discovery um, of a new talent that's going to help make you money. So expect new opportunities that are in alignment with your beliefs. Uh, you may expect receive more money in your job or kick off a side project to bring in some extra cash. Um, if you have a talent, that is awesome. Not all talents can make us money, but Aquarius is right now. You can expect that if you, you know, have a strong talent, there's going to be some way to monopolize it, monetize it, excuse me. Uh, for Pisces, this new moon is in your first house. Um, you might be overcoming a psychological crisis or, Come out as a new person. This is really like a new beginning for you guys. Um, you could be re recovering from a hard challenge, and we want to. I want you guys to consider it as like a rebranding or a total like rebirth of yourself. It's a good time to plan for your future and allow yourself to feel really proud of like all that you've been able to accomplish and staying on track to fulfilling the life of your long, the life of your dreams. Um, you are going to be able to have all of those like lifelong dreams come to fruition for fruition soon. <laughs> um, and it's just going to overall be a really good like reinvention of yourself. So that's it for the horoscopes. Um, now just reflecting a little bit, if you want to journal on this, you can while I'm kind of going over it, but really, um, Pisces is like this awesome, like psychic energy. Um, so thinking about like as a society right now, we are totally leveling up. Um, astrologically speaking, like we are totally leveling up. So we're becoming more psychic. We're becoming more in tuned. We're really um, starting to realize that like, if we don't change our ways, this earth is not going to be around for us. Um, we're not going to be able to have food. You know, a study was just published that said we have about 60 years left of, um, being able to feed ourselves if we don't change our farming habits and change the monocultures um, and monocrops and all of that terrible things. So that's pretty scary. You know, I expect to live for another 60 years um, and I don't want to be in a drought or a famine. So I think that the world is waking up to this and as we become more psychic, we're going to start seeing a lot more like coincidences and congruencies. So I just want you guys to reflect and see if you've noticed any of these things. Um, maybe you're feeling like surges of energy, which I know that I've totally felt the past couple of weeks. Um, maybe you're getting a little bit more headaches or some dizziness or maybe some nausea recently. Um, I've noticed a lot of congruencies. Um, I've been substitute teaching every once in a while. And I, one day I came in and I like, on every plan you get, it says like what to do during a lockdown. And when I saw the words lockdown, I was like, we're gonna have a lockdown today. I had no clue, had no email, no idea. And we had a lockdown that day. And I was just like, whoa, <laughs> like I knew it was gonna happen. So things like that, where you kind of have like these little inklings of like, mm, I feel like this might happen. Or, oh, I've noticed that, you know, I was really worried about this a couple of weeks ago and now it's kind of coming into fruition or um things like that so that could be um something that you've noticed and the next one is how can you see beyond life's polarities and view the world as coherent so um life isn't black and white. And I think that a lot of us kind of had that idea of like judging like right from wrong, um, good versus bad, dark versus light, all these like strong polarities. But how can we see life is like, if you're going to go black versus light, like how can you see life on the gray scale? Or realizing that, you know, everyone is doing their best. Maybe they made decisions that were um, like poor in our eyes, but look at their point of view and see maybe they, you know, made the best decision that they could have in that time. Um, things like that. So kind of getting away from that, that polarity and really seeing the world as, okay, we're all coming together. Let's see how we can put ourselves in other people's shoes, what they're going through, um, and understand people's actions and, um, from, from a higher place. 
how can you embody love as a state of consciousness rather than an emotion? So there was um, this thing that I read, I forgot who said it, but the quote was like, love is misunderstood as an emotion when in reality is it is a state of consciousness, a state of being. So it's a way of like seeing the world, um, a way of acting and vibrating at your highest frequency. And instead of just being like, oh, I'm, you know, feeling like I'm in love right now. Um, how can you literally be love? Like I am love. I am that light. That is one of the highest frequencies that we can vibrate at. How can you incorporate that into your, you know, everyday life, whether it's you go outside and just have a beautiful appreciation of the sun shining or gratitude for the house that you live in or your access to, you know, food, water, um, plumbing, like things like that. Um, and really just like embodying that love as a state of consciousness. And we talked about this before, but Pisces is about dropping into your heart. So how can you allow your heart to guide your decisions? On our last new moon, um, we kind of talked about intuition. So thinking about, you know, your intuition and your heart, I think kind of go hand in hand. Um, I think of intuition as my gut, because that's where I feel it. Some people might feel it in their hearts, um, but really like, how can you be guided by what you know is right for you? And if you're being guided by your heart and you're coming from a space of love, um, you're going to be, you know, acting as your highest self and feeling as your highest self. So those are just some things to think about with this new moon. Um, lots of good stuff here. So much like joy, appreciation, good energy that I'm absolutely obsessed with. Um, and also I think we can see a lot of just elevation in our moods and our attitude, um, with the changing of seasons. Like that's, that's not anything different than what we normally would experience, but it's just so heightened with the energy of this new moon. So that's pretty awesome. All right, so we're going to pull um, a tarot card. I, if you haven't been here before, um, I use this deck. It is the um, Wild Unknown Animal Spirit deck. I like this one a lot. It's by Kim Kranz. And I like to pull this one when we're working with the moons because instead of um, being a traditional tarot, it's all animal cards, it's all animal spirits. So I like to just like figure out what animal spirits should we really be embodying for the next like new moon, for this next moon cycle. Um, and for those of you that are not familiar with tarot, it's really just like a mirror for what's going on in our life. It's nothing bad. Um, sometimes it gets a little bit of a negative connotation because you know we see in the movies like, the tarot readers, like the crazy lady who tells you you're going to die or something bad's going to happen. Um, that's not what tarot is. It is just a reflection of uh, what's going on in our life and in the world. And it can help to give us some guidance, um, help us make some decisions and provide clarity on the situations in our life. So I will just keep shuffling these real quick. And as I'm shuffling, I'm thinking about the intention, like what do we need to know for this lunar cycle? Um, what energy should we call in? All right. So. All right, let's see. Ooh, we have the cheetah energy. So if you guys can look at my screen, I don't know if you can see it that well, because it's probably small, but we've got the cheetah energy. So. I will read you the description. And if anybody um, wants me to send them a picture of the card in the description, just send me a message on Instagram or you can type in the chat with your email if you don't have Instagram and I'll send it and I'll pass it along. So the cheetah is the solar force action achievement and masculine energy. The cheetah is the epitome of the solar forces at work. The sun doesn't shine onto the cheetah, it shines from inside this great creature and expands outward to brighten the universe. The energy within a cheetah's personality is palpable to others, and they naturally attract an audience to bear witness to their remarkable achievements. Purpose and passion are the best fuel for a cheetah's forward momentum, so if you're lacking in those areas, reconnect to the why before you start running. Um, we want, when in balance, the cheetah has like boundless energy. It can achieve anything. 
Um, in order to bring it into balance, we want to reconnect to our purpose. And if we become out of balance, it can show up as impatience or competitiveness. So I think this is a perfect card for this new moon. If we think about like, this is all these like beginnings, this creativity, this like light of within us shining out to the world. Um, I think that's so amazing. So this is great. This is a really great card for us for this cycle. Uh, and now we're going to get into our journal. So this is where, um, if you would like to participate, you can. I want you guys to just find like a nice cozy spot, um, pull out your journal, turn to an open page, and I'm going to set two different time, like two timers. Um, the first, they're both gonna be five minutes, but the first one we're gonna focus on this first journal prompt, which is planting a seed. So we're gonna take the next five minutes to journal our intentions for this moon cycle. I think intentions are really important right now because it is just such this like new beginning energy. So think about like, what is your creative process? How can you take this creative energy and turn it into something productive? Um, what goals do you wanna accomplish over the next few weeks? And remember to use present tense when writing intentions. So if you wanna put the intention out there that you're abundant um, and you're gonna have you know a really abundant month, you can, you want to write it in the present tense saying like, I am abundant. I am having the most abundant month of my life. Um, I am attracting energy into, you know, my space. I'm attracting money into my space, whatever it is. But you want to make sure that you are writing it in the present tense. So having said that, I'm going to set the timer and you guys can pull out your pens and pencils and we'll start writing. All right, go ahead.
All right. So take your last couple of seconds to write down um, your, your last little bit of that. And then we're gonna move on to the next general prompt, which is about exploring your dreams. So spend the next five minutes um, writing down some of like your big vision goals. These are things that like, what would your dream life look like? What does your dream job look like? How would an ideal day look like if you were to like embody your dream life? Um, and then kind of think a little bit deeper about like what steps can you take to get yourself a little bit closer to making those dreams your reality? Um, this could be, you know, like if you have a business or if you have been thinking about like starting your own business, like what does that look like? Um, maybe you work for a company and you see yourself, you know, getting a promotion, um, getting a new home, whatever it is, just try to focus on like what that dream life looks like. Maybe your dream life looks like, you know, sitting on a hut on the beach and never working again, <laughs> but kind of just thinking about like, what is it going to take to get you there? Um, what are real steps that you can do um, to embody this life? So we will start that right now. Do you want me to go out into the universe that I want a garden? I so badly want a garden this year and I'm finally in a place where I can kind of have one. So I've been putting out that I'm going to have this beautiful garden that I'm going to put in our backyard. Um, and all my veggies are going to grow and they're going to be lots of good food for me and, um, my boyfriend. And I also just really want to embody creativity. So my affirmations were, you know, I'm abundant, I'm creative, I'm attracting all that I want, um, to me and the universe is giving me what I want. So, and what I need. So that's pretty much um, what I was calling in was my garden. And I'm always focused on growing Root Wellness Co and building my brand. So that's, I just throw that in every month. Um, <laughs> but that was the other one. And then as for my dream life, I wrote down just a few things that, you know, I, what my dream life means to me. And that's being able to collaborate with amazing women and men. Um, in this like spiritual and health space, making sure that I am able to practice my spirituality and um, focus on like my mental health and my physical health and having my um, own home with my dog and my boyfriend and then being able to travel throughout the year because I didn't realize how much um, COVID, you know, took away travel and how much that means to me. So that's pretty much what I wrote down. Does anyone else like to share? Donna, I think your hand is raised. You can go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so the other day I went out and I bought some blank greeting cards. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm going to do is come up with my own greeting rather than to buy something at a store that somebody else wrote down. Oh, I love that. And I think that that shouldn't be something that's beyond... Um, what I could do. And I've already come up with some ideas. So I just have to practice drawing, but the more I draw, the better I get at it, even awesome. though I'm not an artist, <laughs> but I can draw well enough that you know what it is. Cool. So um, that's my goal, my creative side. Yes, I love that. That's nice. I love that creativity and being able to do things yourself. So that's awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Any, anyone else have any um, thing they want to share or questions or comments? No. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and move on. If you feel called to share um, after the meditation, that's totally fine. Uh, just unmute yourself and start talking. <laughs> so we'll just do a quick little meditation. Um, basically, I just want everyone to sit and either sit or lie down in a comfortable position. Um, you can put your hands on your lap, but I would like your palms to be facing up so that you can, um, you're, that means that you're receiving the energy rather than if you're putting them down, it's more grounding. Today, we want to hold them up. And 
Take a couple of deep breaths, close your eyes, begin to really relax the muscles in your body. Um, some of this Pisces like creative energy is connected to our um, sacral chakra. So I do have my little sound bowl here. Um, this one is supposed to be connected to the sacral chakra um, with its tone. So I'll play this for just a few minutes um, to help you guys kind of get into your relaxation. But really just take a deep breath in. Let it out through your mouth and start to settle in. Focus on your breathing. If any thoughts pop into your head, simply just let them go and return to your breath. Okay, so start to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, open your eyes. Um, you can stretch if you need to, but that should have activated your sacral chakra. So hopefully you start getting some creative energy coming through um, in the next you know day or so. But I am so grateful that all of you were here to, you know, do this ritual with me and hopefully you come next month. Um, don't forget if you want a picture of the Cheeto card with the um, explanation behind it, just send me a message on Instagram or send me an email if you don't have Instagram. Okay.